Amen. Take your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter number 8. Book of Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8 is one of those hallmark chapters in the Bible. There's so many wonderful truths and thoughts and so much we can glean from and grow from. I just want to focus on a few short verses out of this great chapter this morning. Romans chapter 8, we'll begin our reading, verse number 14. The Bible says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. Let's pray. Our Father, we certainly thank you for allowing us to come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Lord, we don't take for granted this privilege. Lord, we realize that we live in a day and age where people would just soon the doors of the house of God be closed. We live in a day and age where people think we're weak-minded to pray to you. People think that your word is nothing but myths, and stories, Lord, they think that, oh, Lord, we're wasting our time. But, Lord, we're certainly grateful we can come and worship you this morning. We've enjoyed the good singing. We've enjoyed the good testimonies. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Lord, thank you that the Word of God is true. It's not stories. It's events. And Lord, it's the very Word and will of God for our lives. We're thankful, Lord, that... There's no myths in the Word of God, and we're thankful for your presence and for the reality of you. And God, and we're glad that we can know you in the free pardon of sins. Lord, this isn't a waste of time. It's worthiness of time that we can come out from the world and we can come to this oasis, this refuge, and draw strength from the things of God. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd bless your people. I pray right now you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that, Lord, you wouldn't allow the devil or anybody to distract or disrupt what you desire to do in the service this morning. I pray that you'd sit down amongst us and you'd help us, Lord, and you'd encourage and edify your people. Lord, I pray if there's anyone in the building today that can't say what Brother Seth just said. He was thankful that he's saved. Uh, Lord, if there's anybody here today that doesn't know that they're saved, I pray before the final amen of the service... Uh, Lord, they'd get born again. And Lord, they can leave out rejoicing, being glad they're saved as well. Father, I pray for as anybody struggling, Lord. Uh, Lord, you would go by their way today and strengthen them and help them. Lord, anybody low, I pray you'd lift them up. And I pray that for the next few minutes, Lord, our thoughts and our hearts and our intentions would all be on thee. Lord, thank you for being our rose today, the rose of Sharon. And God, I pray that we'd glorify you and worship you and exalt you. Lord, I pray that folks could say what I, uh, Isaiah said in the, king, the year King Uzziah died. They saw the Lord high and lifted up. And I pray we'd see you high and lifted up today. Now, Lord, have your perfect will and way. Use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to three little simple things as a way of introduction out of these verses. Things that I see and glean from. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the emphasis on sonship. In verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, and throughout this uh, uh, wonderful chapter, there's much made... Uh, I'm being a son of God or sonship. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 when I'm talking about sons, that means boy, girl, uh, 
man or woman that's been saved by the good grace of God. Uh, throughout the New Testament, uh, uh, God's interested uh, in bringing people into the right relationship to Him where they could be called the children of God. Uh, and He's interested uh, in our sonship. Uh, can I say, uh, in order to be in the family of God, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, only one way. Jesus said, you must be born again. Uh, and to be in a natural family, you must be born into that family. Uh, uh, can I say, we find uh, when you're born again into the family of God, uh, you're also adopted into the family of God. Uh, it said that uh, uh, we receive the adoption of sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, uh, can I say that's what the Jews hated Jesus for the most? Uh, I'm talking about that Pharisaical crowd uh, because he didn't refer to God as Jehovah. He called him Father. Uh, uh, why? Because he was God's Son manifest in the flesh. Uh, and when you and I are saved by the good grace of God, uh, we get born again and adopted into the family of God. Uh, we too can call him Father. Uh, Aren't you glad to know him as Father today? Uh, we have a heavenly Father who loves us, uh, who gave his Son to die for us, that we might be born into the family of God uh, and become part of the family of God. Uh, and we look at this, and he's dealing with sonship. Uh, and today, the only thing that's important is whether or not you belong in the family of God, uh, whether or not you've been born again. Uh, whether or not you're a son of God, uh, we see sonship. I also notice uh, the emphasis on the Spirit. Look again at verse 6, or 16. The Spirit itself, bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, verse 14, it talks about being led of the Spirit of God. Uh, 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 verse 15 uh, talks about receiving the Spirit of adoption, uh, and spirits capitalize. Uh, verse 16 talks about the Spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit. There's great emphasis on the Spirit. Uh, why? Uh, uh, because when you get born again, uh, uh, you receive the spirit of adoption. Uh, uh, the spirit of God seals you unto the day of redemption. Uh, and you uh, uh, now know you're saved because His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Uh, I'm glad I know Him today. Amen. And I'm glad His spirit bears witness with my spirit. I worry about these folks that claim to be saved, but they don't know anything about the spirit of God. I want to tell you, the Word of God says His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, and we are led by the Spirit of God. Uh, and oh, my dear friends, we see the emphasis on the Spirit. We see the emphasis on sonship, but there's also an emphasis on suffering. Look with me in verse 17. It says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let me ask you a question this morning. Does anybody ever have a trial? Anybody ever have storm clouds come into your life? Anybody ever been sick? Anybody ever face adversity? Anybody ever just wonder what else could go wrong? Well, can I say, if you're saved today, you can guarantee you're going to have to suffer. Matter of fact, the Bible says that they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And there are sufferings in this life. There are heartaches in this life. There are trials, there are storm clouds, there are bad days. And contrary to what fellows like Joe Olstein wants you to believe, not every day is a good day. Some days it's a struggle. Some days it's tough. Some days it's hard putting one foot in front of the other. Some days you don't feel good. Some days you get unexpected bad news. Uh, some days you get unexpected bills. Some days things go wrong. Uh, things break. Uh, our washing machines break. Cars break. Uh, dishwashers break. Things go wrong. Not everything is wonderful. But can I say, if we never ever suffered, we'd never know how great God is because He helps us through our sufferings. He doesn't take the suffering away. 
He just helps us handle the suffering. Hmm? But can I say, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, penned down that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Brother James, all you've ever suffered for Christ's sake one day won't even be a memory. You say, Brother Doug, it's tough right now. Just hang on, brother. Glory's coming. It may be hard right now, but there's coming a day you won't even remember it. One glimpse of Him, it's going to erase all the heartache, all the badness, all the suffering, all the tough times. It's all going to be gone. Matter of fact, you'd wish you'd have suffered a little more for His sake when you see all that He has in store for you. But I'm not going to preach on any of those things. What I want to look at is there in verse 17, he said, and if, now that's a big word, that word if. That word if means you can or you cannot. You can be a child of God or you can't be a child of God. That's between you and God, whether or not you've ever been born again. He says, if you are, a child of God. And if children, you're not only a child of God. You're not only saved from your sins. You've not only been born again, made a new creature in Christ. You've not only had all your sin washed away and, and everything. He goes on and says, because you know, God just never does the bare minimum. He always does above and beyond anything we can even comprehend. He said, and if children, then heirs. We're not only, Brother Brian, a son of God, we're an heir to everything God has. Now, both my parents passed away and neither one of them left me anything. They didn't have anything to leave. But I got a heavenly father that owns it all. Amen. Are you listening? I'm an heir to everything he owns. Amen. Now, Miss Nett and I was over at Walmart. Please forgive me, I hate going to Walmart. But we was at Walmart <laughs> yesterday. Really, I hate Walmart. I don't care what Walmart you go into anywhere in the country. I would have never believed there was those kind of people in this world until you go to Walmart. There are people in Walmart. I just, I don't know where, what rock they crawl out from under. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm serious, man. They give Redneck a bad name. I'm telling you, man. It's bad. Uh, and there is no such thing as a refined Walmart. But we was at Walmart, we bought some stuff yesterday, and we were in line, and she noticed People Magazine, I think it was, that uh, the royal family's having another baby. Anybody heard that? Nope. Yep. They already got one. They got little knothead. Now they got little knothead junior on the way, huh? They're having a royal baby. And the whole world is all in a feather because one of them princes got married to some, some bimbo, and they had a baby. Now they're going to have another one. Because that baby is now going to be the heir to all that England has to offer. Huh? The royal family. Isn't that wonderful? But that pales in comparison Come on. to be an heir yeah. Yeah. in the righteous family. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah, Are you listening to me? He says, if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. Not heirs of some royal family here on earth. Not heirs of some redneck family here on earth. Not heirs to uh, uh, some poor family or even some rich family. I mean, even Bill Gates has nothing uh, uh, to compare with what God has to offer. I'm talking about the God of glory, uh, uh, the God who tells the sun when to shine, uh, uh, the God who put the galaxies upon galaxies upon galaxies, uh, who owns everything. He says, you're an heir to him says, and if children, heirs, heirs of God. But then he goes on a little farther. And joint heirs with Christ. He says, you're just not an heir. You're an heir of God, but that's not even an heir of God. You're joint heirs with Christ. Now, we understand that the Bible teaches about the triune God. 
There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're all three one. Now, I don't understand that, uh, how three separate entities can be the same. I don't understand it, uh, but I believe it because that's what the Bible teaches. Uh, uh, my little finite mind can't comprehend all the vastness of Almighty God, uh, but we understand that uh, uh, the Son uh, was manifest in the flesh, uh, and we realize He's the one that created everything, uh, and He's the one who went to Calvary and died for our sins that we might be born again was buried and rose again he's ascended to the right hand of the father uh, and the father said he's made everything under his footstool and one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall proclaim uh, he's lord of lords and king of kings uh, there is no greater than him Amen. and right here it says chief that that crazy wild Irish Indian that lives over there on the backside of Howell Avenue or whatever it's called, you're a joint heir with Christ. That's right. The one that's Lord of Lords yeah. and King of Kings, uh, that you being born again, uh, I have the same standing in the sight of God that He does. Amen. Oh, now again, my little finite mind can't comprehend. And the only way I can put it into words is we have been blessed to have three children. We have Jordan, Christian, and Sydney. Now, each one of them would tell you that they're the favorite child, especially the one on the front row. He's constantly trying to talk us into it, but I'm your favorite. But you have to understand, being a parent, we love them all the same. We don't favor one above the other. Now, sometimes one of them's nerves might get on my nerves more than the other. But we don't favor our love is unconditional for each of them. Uh, and we love them the same. Uh, and if uh, uh, something ever happened to us, we'd leave them the same. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've tried to preach out of three Bibles and mark up in three Bibles so that uh, when I go off the scene, they'll each have a Bible that Dad preached out of. Uh, and they'll each have a part of what Dad did in the ministry. Uh, and they'll each have something they can look back on and say, uh, and tell their children, you had a granddaddy that believed it right and stood for it uh, and here's what he used uh, uh, to help and encourage people uh, but we love them the same uh, and the only thing I can understand brother Ray uh, hey uh, God looks at his right hand and sees Jesus uh, and he looks out and sees you and I have been born again and he just loves us the same uh, it's unconditional uh, we're all just heirs of God and he's got something for us all hallelujah huh with all that in mind, it talks about heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. It all talks about there's an inheritance. Matter of fact, Peter says it's, it's, it's incorruptible and it's undefiled. And that inheritance that God has for us... Uh, Hey, the uh, rust can't affect it and the moth can't affect it. Uh, and it's something precious that God has in store for you and I. So this is what I want to preach on this morning. I want to preach on what's included in the will. What's included in the will. Hallelujah. I'm born again in the family of God. Don't deserve His grace. Don't deserve His mercy. I don't deserve to be in the will. Hey, but the Word of God said I'm in the will. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I don't deserve it, but I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to bless God for it. Hey, what a blessing to know He's got something in store for His youngins, huh? What's included in the will? Can I say, there's no way in a month of Sundays I can tell you everything that's included in the will. But let me give you some highlights. We won't get into the sublines of the subcontract of the subcontract of all because we got the whole Bible telling us what's in the will of God. But I want to say there's some things included in the will. First of all, there's the entering into the joy of the Lord. The Bible says in Revelation 21 and verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 
day. Uh, hey, there's coming a day, neighbor, uh, when you pass from this life to next, you're going to sleep in this life to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, he's going to say, welcome home. Uh, enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, there's coming a glorious day uh, when God himself shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Uh, there'll be no more sorrows, uh, no more heartache, uh, no more sickness, uh, no more pain, uh, no more separation from loved ones, uh, no more death, no more hurt, no more pain. Uh, what a blessing! Uh, we'll escape the wrath of God and enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, see, those that reject Jesus Christ, all that's in their future is the wrath of God. Because they would not have Jesus as Savior. Everything He suffered on Calvary, they'll suffer for all of eternity because they rejected Him and His payment for their sin. But I want to tell you, those of us that are born again, we enter into the joy of the Lord. No more, no more bad days. No more sadness. No more down, down No more downtrodden. No more cast out. No more uh, anything uh, accusing us of anything. We'll just uh, enjoy the blessings of God forevermore. When Paul said rejoice forevermore, one day we'll rejoice forevermore. You know why? It's in the will. I get to go to that land where sorrow is a foreign language. I'm going to that land of peace and joy and love and mercy and grace uh, forevermore. I mean, we're all going to get a body just like His. We're all going to look just like Him. And we're all going to get to enjoy the blessings of God forevermore. What's included in the will? We get to enter into the joy of the Lord. Not only that, we get to enjoy the scenes of glory. Hmm? Yeah. Revelation 21 verse 1 said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, uh, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh, we're going to a place uh, and see things. The Bible says it hasn't even entered in the heart of man what God had prepared for them that love Him. Uh, I want to tell you something, friend. Uh, I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it. Uh, but we're going to walk on streets of transparent gold. Uh, we're going to a city... Uh, where the gates are pearl, the walls are jasper. Uh, hey, where the foundation of the city, uh, it's not granite. Uh, it's not uh, uh, some other kind of stone or mud or rock formation. No, uh, it's diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and every precious stone. Uh, hey, uh, there's no need of light, for He's the light of the city, and God Himself shall be with us, and we'll be with Him. Uh, there'll be no more night. Uh, it's one eternal day. Uh, Hey, we'll get to see that uh, of 12, four squared city uh, and everything points to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll get to enjoy it forevermore. Our streets are paved with tar. Uh, there there will be gold, transparent, clear as crystal, crystal river, rainbow and lightnings coming from behind the throne of God. Uh, Oh, all the uh, uh, heavenly host and all that is there and the most precious thing will be Jesus Himself. And we'll enjoy it forever. Uh, no more orange barrels in heaven. Hallelujah. Uh, no more traffic. You want to be somewhere, you just say, I want to be there and you're there. Be known as we were known. Uh, no introductions in heaven. Uh, Get to go up to the Apostle Paul and say, Paul, tell me about that road to Damascus one more time. And he'll tell you and then he'll say, yeah, now you tell me about when you got born again. You'll tell him. Then you'll both go to the Lamb and shout and thank him again for what he done for us. Huh? Whoa! What a time it's going to be. We'll enjoy all the scenes of glory. See the trees. See all the beautiful things that are there that God has prepared for us. Oh, we'll enjoy it. What's included in the will? The entering into the joy of the Lord, enjoying the things of glory, but we'll get to eat at the marriage supper. 
Oh, the Bible says in Revelation 19, verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and the wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true saints of God. Uh, can I say there's going to be a supper one day? Said her wife has made herself ready. You see, we've already been to the judgment seat of Christ. Be judged for the deeds done in our body after we got saved. And then we'll be given that fine twine linen, which is the righteousness of, of the saints. That fine twine linen represents a garment uh, based on the grace of Almighty God. Uh, and we'll stand before Him. And for the first time, the wedding emphasis won't be on the bride but on the bridegroom. Amen. All of us dressed in those white wedding garments will reflect His holiness and His beauty. And when He shows up, all will hail the bridegroom. Uh, you see, the only other way you can get into a family is be married into a family. Can I say in being saved, we're born again. You're born into the family. You're adopted into the family. And hallelujah, one day we'll be married into the family. Amen. And we'll be at the marriage supper. Aren't you glad there's going to be food in heaven? Amen. Uh, I believe there's going to be Montgomery and ribs and Swiss rolls in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, if it's something we enjoy down here, why would he have anything less than something we'd enjoy over there? Don't matter what he'll serve, it'll be wonderful. Some people say you have manna. I don't care what it is, it'll be wonderful because it'll be with him. Sure. And he'll have a feast spread for his bride. And we'll sit and we'll commune with him and fellowship with him and love and adore him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, what a blessing. What's included in the will, preacher? There's the elation of true worship. You see, here we're constrained in our worship. We're constrained by a lot of things. We're constrained by how we feel. I'll be honest with you this morning, I don't feel very well. I'd like to be able to preach this thing out without feeling rough this morning. Sometimes you don't feel good. You want to worship, but you just can't. Sometimes our worship's controlled by what kind of week we've had. And you might have had bad news this week, and as much as you want to come in and worship God, you're weighed down with bad news. Uh, sometimes the temperature in the building. Some people think it's too cold. Some people think it's too warm. And that'll affect the way you worship. Uh, there's all kinds of things that will affect the way we worship. We get to heaven, there will be nothing that affects. You see, even this very flesh affects the way we worship. Some of you would have a spell, but you're afraid of what people think about you. In heaven, you won't care. Hmm? We do. Well, people think I'm a nut. They already do anyway. Just have yourself a dime. But we'll have the elation of true worship. Revelation chapter 5 says this in verse number 9, and they sung a new song. I've heard people say, well, they're going to sing Amazing Grace. That'll be the new song. Well, it won't be new. I've heard that song a million times. It's going to be a new song. Huh? It'll be something that we'll sing to Him in appreciation and gladness of His grace and His beauty. It'll be a new song. And they're saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Say, who's going to be there? Everybody's ever been saved. You know, there's some lame brain preacher. I even hate saying this. There's some lame brain preacher down south. He's made this statement that a black man doesn't have a soul. When he dies, he dies just like a dog. That man's a fool. What does he do with, the, with Philip and the Ethiopian? Huh? And we could go on and on about people of color that's been saved in the Bible. But right there in Revelation 5 said, out of every tongue, every kindred, every nation, yeah, every. there'll be somebody from everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Everywhere. Yes, sir. If you don't like that, you don't want to go because you're going to be messed up. Yes, sir. Amen. And I would to God... If somebody is saved makes such a stupid statement they were so racist, I pray God puts them right in the middle of all, all every color and every nation, whoever they was afraid of. Huh? Huh? Isn't that crazy? 
That guy's Jerry Springer, Baptist preachers is what he is. He's just trying to make, make a scene. That's foolish. I want to tell you something. God is not mocked. And God's Word said every people, every tongue, every nation will be saved. Huh? Amen. He's redeemed us out of every nation. It said in verse 10, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Uh, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and beast and elder, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands and thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength and honor and glory and blessing. Uh, we'll truly worship uh, without constraint uh, and give the Lamb what is due His worthy name. Uh, that day there will be no emphasis on anybody but the Lamb. Amen. We won't worry about what our neighbor thinks of us. We're going to shout our lungs out, hallelujah, and not get tired or hoarse shouting them out because we'll have a glorified body. What's included in the will, the elation of true worship? We really get to see Him and really get to worship Him. Huh? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Huh? But Ray sang that song uh, uh, about everybody will be happy over there. We really will. Huh? I don't know why we can't be happy down here. You're saved, born again. Your name's already recorded there. You might as well get happy. Huh? What's included in the will? Can I say included in the will there's an earmark for a mansion. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, now some lame brain Dr. Bottle Stopper tried to say, well, that really means rooms. Well, if God meant rooms, He'd have said rooms. God don't have Holiday Inn in heaven. He's got mansions. And again, the Bible says that it hadn't even entered in the heart of man what God had prepared for them that love Him. If you've ever seen the Biltmore estate, that's nothing compared to what God's went to prepare for you. So you ought to pick up and get happy today because it's included in the will. There's an earmark for a mansion. Brother Phil sings that song, I hold a clear title to a mansion. Hallelujah. Your name's already on it. Uh, you won't even have to worry about changing the color. It's going to be exactly what you want. huh? It's going to be wonderful. huh? Can I say what? What is included in the will? There's the exaltation above the angels. You see, we were created a little lower than the angels. But we're going to be elevated above the angels when we're made a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, people worship angels. I don't know why. Uh, we're going to judge them one day. You understand that, don't you? Why in the world would you want to worship one? Huh? Do you, 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 I guess people worship frogs too, but they were created below us. Why would you worship a frog? Huh? Just trying to help you. You're going to be exalted above angels one day. That's included in the will. Can I say, there's a lot of other things included in the will. But let me just close with this thought. What's included in the will? Included in the will is the promise that you can never be excluded out of the will. Uh, look what it said again in verse number 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, God's very distinct in His Word. He said what He meant, meant what He said. That's why I, I don't give any credence whatsoever to any new version. If it's new, it's not true. If it's true, it's not new. God meant what He said. We don't need somebody to come and correct God. Are you listening? You say, well, I like something that's more up-to-date than get in the Bible. It's as up-to-date as you can get. Huh? God, it's still up-to-date for today. And God used that term adoption. Why did he use that term adoption? Well, under the law, God made it very clear that if you adopted a child, that you could never write the adopted child out of the inheritance. Now, Chief, you've got Clint Jr. and you've got Eddie back there. And let's say you adopted somebody else, Brian. You talk about tribulation. <laughs> well, let's just say for argument's sake, he caused you fits, but you adopted him. 
And he caused you so much fits that it caused a wedge between Clint and Eddie. And Eddie started acting just like him. And you told Eddie you disowned him. And Eddie took off. You no longer had any more fellowship with Eddie. You never thought about Eddie. You didn't care about Eddie. Eddie done got on your last nerve. He's gone. And you decided one day you was writing him out of the will. You could. Because he's your natural born son. Even though the adopted son might have started it all, you can never write him out of the will. Not under the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. When Jesus hung on Calvary, Miss Abby, he cried one of the seven sayings that he said while he hung on the cross. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, when Isaiah 53, 6 came into being, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all, Miss May, when the Lord took May Perry's sin and put him on his son, and Jesus became your sin and my sin and the sins of the world and became the scapegoat for us and became the lamb that was slain. When God laid our sin on him, God can no longer look on him because God is holy and God cannot accept sin. So God turned his back on his son. And when he turned his back on his son, he forsook his son. And Jesus died in an open shame. But Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Jesus and the Father has never turned his back on an adopted son. His natural son, his only begotten son, he turned his back on. But we can never be excluded out of the will, Brother Mark. Even if I get to acting like the biggest heathen in town, mm -hmm. I'll pay for it in this life. You're right. But God will never exclude me from the will because I've been adopted into the family of God. My dear friends, there's privileges in being saved. Now, I don't want to act like a heathen, Brother Terry. I want to do everything in my power to, to be an honor to my Lord for all that He's done for me. It's a joy to be able to serve Him. It's a joy to be able to suffer for His name's sake. It's a joy to be able to put up with some of the uh, uh, sufferings of this present day because I know greater things coming. But listen... Even if I lose my mind and I blow my testimony, He will never exclude me from the will. Once you're in, you're in. Hallelujah. That I've been adopted into the family of God. Well, let me ask you something this morning. Are you an heir? Have you been born again? Say, preacher, I don't know. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. We'll take the Bible and show you what the Bible says so you can get that thing nailed down. If you've never been saved, you can be saved today. You can be born again. You can be adopted into the family of God. You can set your sights on that marriage supper one of these days. You can, you can be as sure of it as I am. Been saved 40 years. I've been like Abraham. I've been on a journey. I've been looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Haven't seen it yet, but I will one day. I believe it's just over the horizon. If you're not saved, you can be saved today. Born again. All that matters. Doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. Don't matter what street you lived on. Don't matter how much money you got in your pocket or how much money you got in your pocket. The only thing that matters is whether or not you've been born again. Whether or not you're an heir. An heir of God. A joint heir with Christ. Because friend, if you're that, you own it all. You own it all. Everything will come into play one day and you'll look back and you'll say, Psh, look at what I traded for a mansion. I gave an old tattered garment stained with sin for all of this because I had enough sense to accept Jesus Christ when He was dealing with my heart. Friend, if you're not saved, you can be saved today. That's all that matters. And if you are an heir, why don't you start living like it? You ever seen them British royal bloods? They don't walk the streets like they're paupers. Some of you act like you're a bunch of beggars. You act like bums living underneath the bridge. You are of a royal priesthood. You are of a chosen generation. This world is not your home. 
You've been made a joint heir to the throne of Christ. You've been, uh, your name's recorded in heaven. Uh, you've been made a king and priest of God. Uh, your conversation's in heaven, friend. You ought to live above the rudiments of this world. Uh, you ought to not be stuck up and stuffy. You ought to be kind and compassionate, merciful. But you ought to walk like you've got something in your step. And His name's Jesus. That's uh, it. Y'all walk through life saying, hey, yeah, uh, I, I've had some bad news this week, but that's okay. Jesus is still on the throne. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hey, things ought to not get you down like it does the world because your Father owns it all. That's it. Uh, matter of fact, if you start walking right and dealing with Him right, He might send the answer a lot quicker. Are you listening? My dear friends, if you're an heir, why don't you just start acting like it? Hmm? I used to take my children to the mall when they was little. You've heard this story, but it's true. I'd point out people and say, you ever come home looking like that? We're going to the woodshed. Because you're a foster child, and I expect more out of you. Uh, you know, one, one thing that's never flew at our household, well, so-and-so does it, I don't care. You're a foster child. You're not doing that. You're not looking like that. You're not acting like that. We expect different out of you. huh? That's why now that they're grown, I usually don't fret when they're out somewhere. First of all, I know everybody in town. I'll find out about it. <laughs> but second of all, they've been out too many times and I've got too many comments from too many adults saying, boy, your children act respectful. That don't mean they won't blow it today. But they've been trained to act like a foster child. People say, boy, I really appreciate how you... You know why? Because they've been trained. They're foster kids. Well, if you're, if you're a Christian, you ought to act like it. Sure. You ought to walk like it. You ought to walk like God's your father. Because he is. is. Huh? You ought to walk like you own it all. Because you do. That's why you ought to take care of it. Because you own it. Huh? This whole world's going to burn up. But still, you own it. It's your footstool. Because it's Jesus' footstool. And you're a joint heir to his his kingdom. So why don't you start living like it? Huh? That and I was talking yesterday. Now, I'm going to make some of you mad. Don't mean to. Don't get mad at me. You had a birthday this week. Don't get mad at me, all right? I'll talk to Kevin. He was raised Catholic. Here's where the Catholics beat the Baptists all over the place. Now, we know it's not in doctrine. They're screwy. But they educate their people to educate their children so when they grow up to give back to the Catholic Church. You know what we educate our children to do? To grow up and be bums and depend on God for everything. That's what we do. Matter of fact, in average Baptist church, if you, if you announce that your child wants to be something professional, they look at you like you're crazy. Don't you know, your, your children are supposed to be bums. Show me that. I believe Luke was a physician. Matthew was a tax collector, which was a high-end job back in the day. Uh, Peter was just a fisherman preacher yeah but he had his own fishing business uh, they weren't a bunch of bums but we treat our children gotta, you know you, you can't ever let Lucas grow up and have a brain he's got to have some Baptist preacher give him a list of what he's supposed to do and what he's not supposed to do he can't think for himself well, why don't you just put the Bible in him and put Jesus in his heart and let Jesus teach him how to grow and conduct his being and it'd be alright if he wants to grow up and, and work a, a manual labor job and dig ditches or if he wants to grow up and be a professor. It don't matter as long as he knows Jesus. But give him every opportunity. Hmm. Don't want everybody to grow up and be an elf. Yeah, it's only one elf. Huh? Well, why do we do that? Huh? And I know what denomination you come from. They're worse than the Baptists. You know? If you've got an education in that denomination, they really look at you like you, you, know, you don't belong. Because we're not, you're not even supposed to study the Bible. You're just supposed to get up there and God pours it on you like He did Peter on the day of Pentecost. That's right. You don't study. And God help you if you get up in that denomination and you preach with notes. It didn't come from God. Sure it did. He gave it to me when I pinned it down. 
I wasn't smart enough to put all them letters lining up with the same letter. I'm just trying to help you. But we dumb, pl- dumb down and we casualize the things of God. We are of a royal priesthood. It's okay to have a brain and serve God. It's okay to have standards and serve God. It's okay not to live like this world. It's okay uh, I to say God's been the best thing that ever happened to me and I'm going to live like it. It's okay. Amen. Huh? A lot of places, a preacher pulls up in a Cadillac, man, they, they run you, they dismiss you, man, you, you, you're a compromiser. Preacher got to drive him a rust bucket. Huh? You probably heard that, haven't you? Yeah. Huh? And heaven help you, Brother Ray, if somebody buys a new car in the church. Huh? You've seen that. Because you're supposed to sell all you got and give it to them. Yeah, throw the TV out the window too. You might learn something. Never did understand that. Mine's got an on and off switch. And I got a clicker. I don't even have to watch that channel. I got 400 channels or something now, man. I can watch whatever I want. Huh? I can watch Joe Olstein if I want to. I don't want to, but I could if I wanted to. Uh, but you see, we get so caught up in putting people in bondage. If the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. Amen. Why not enjoy being saved? Amen. And I don't know where any of that came from. But it's okay to be saved yes, and enjoy it. Yeah. It's all right to walk around and say, I'm an heir to the throne of Christ and I, it's okay. I'm not a second class citizen. No. I belong to the King of Kings. Yeah. He's my Father. Yeah. He owns it all. Yeah. And that means I've got it all. Hallelujah. Huh? There's nothing that my children would want that if I could afford it, I wouldn't get it for them. Well, you think God would do anything less? As a matter of fact, he told us in Hebrew, if we know how to give gifts to our children, how much more to God? Yeah. Well, I'd take care of his children. Yeah. Well, quit acting like a bum. Start acting like a Christian. Good. You belong to God. And God's good all the time. Yeah. And if you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you get saved? You're living below your privileges. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. It's all right to live an abundant life. It's all right to have joy and peace and love and mercy and grace in your soul. If you don't have that, you can. There's nothing wrong with being saved. Listen, I have time in my life. There have been people who have met me that don't, don't know the Lord. They think people that know the Lord are supposed to be all stuffed shirt, especially if you're a preacher. Oh, you ain't allowed to smile. You gotta be dry and cracker juice, and I, I always act a fool no matter where I am. And you know what? They find they like me. You know, it's okay to like. It's all right to have personality. It's okay to enjoy life. Yeah. I have a good time. Hey, shoot, I'm 51 years old, man. I might not have many more years left. I'm going to enjoy what I got left. Amen. Huh? It's okay to be saved. Some of y'all, if you'd smile, your face would crack. I know how to fix that. Yeah. Get in the altar Come on. and say, Lord, return unto me the joy of thy salvation yes. and let him put a smile in your heart. Amen. Then it'll show up on your face and you can enjoy life. huh? Hallelujah. Life's too short to be miserable. It is. So start living like you're saved. Yeah. If you're not saved, get saved. You'll have something to rejoice over. Because there's nothing like being saved. Are you in the will? That's all that matters this morning. If not, why don't you come and let us introduce you to Jesus. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation.